Hello and welcome back to Ordinary Differential Equations, the video series where we talk a lot about the theory of differential equations. And in today's part 21, we will see how the solution set for a system of linear differential equations looks like. You might remember that we have already talked about that for the homogeneous case and the autonomous case. Hence, in this video, we want to generalize all of that. However, before we do that, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. As a supporter, you can download additional material with the link in the description. For example, you find PDF versions and quizzes for all the videos. Okay, then let's immediately start with our system of linear differential equations. In the general case, this system is always written as x dot is equal to a of t times x plus b of t. And there we have two important ingredients. First, in the domain of the time variable we have an interval or the whole line r and we have a continuous mapping from this interval into the matrices and into the vectors in rn. So this is our system of linear ODEs and let's call it star for the sake of this video. And since we have already discussed a lot about this system star, we can list the things we know. So for example, star has a homogeneous part. This simply means that we can just consider the system where we ignore the part B of t. Which means we only have the matrix vector multiplication on the right hand side. And now please recall from part 19 that the homogeneous system has an n-dimensional solution space we call S0. So this is quite nice, but at first glance it does not help us finding the solution set for the original system here. However, for this we also already know something by the pika lindelof theorem. More precisely, the theorem tells us that a given initial value problem has a unique solution. And as you already know, the initial value problem consists of the system of ODEs and saying that at t0 we are at the value x0. And by the special version of Pika Lindelof we get that we have a global solution of this initial value problem. This means the solution is defined for all points in time, so on the whole interval i. And obviously the codomain has to be Rn. Okay, and now we need a good name for this unique solution and I want to call it gamma with two indices. Namely, I write t0 and x0 in the index. It's not so important, but just a reminder that we have chosen this initial value problem for our global solution. So we can definitely use the existence result we have from the pika lindelof theorem. We can visualize that in the tx plane, so here we have t0 and x0. And now we have our unique solution gamma that goes through this point. And now the idea is to use this one solution we have for the ODE to get all solutions together. So what we want to have in the end is the whole solution set of our system of linear ODEs. And the set of solutions I simply want to call S. Hence S consists of continuously differentiable functions we can call beta. They should be maximal solutions so they are defined on the interval i. And as already mentioned, we have the condition that beta should solve our system star. And now we get a nice result, which might be a little bit surprising. Namely, we can put S0 and gamma together to get our S. So the solution space of our homogeneous part and one solution of the whole ODE gives us the whole solution set. Hence, now we consider the set S0 plus gamma which is just a short way of writing the following set. We consider all the functions alpha plus gamma where alpha comes from S0. Indeed, this is the common way to denote a shifted subspace in linear algebra. And I can tell you, often we call this an affine subspace. It means that we have a subspace, but it's translated by one vector. And now what we want to show, that this affine subspace is exactly our solution set S. So let's use the next minutes to show this nice claim here. 
And you might already know, in order to show an equality for sets, we have to show two inclusions. So let's start with this subset relation. So we take an element from the right hand side and show that it also lies in the left hand side. Therefore, let's fix an alpha from S0 here. And then we take our system of ODEs, but instead of X, we put alpha plus gamma into it. More precisely, we have to do this for every point t in the time variable. So we have alpha of t plus gamma of t and we multiply this from the right to the matrix A of t. And then also in the end, we add our vector B of t. And now you might already see, we can simply use the linearity of the matrix vector multiplication. So we have A t times alpha of t plus A t times gamma of t plus in the end b of t. Okay, and now we recognize that we can use that alpha solves the homogeneous system. So the first part here can be written as alpha dot. And for the second part, we can use that gamma solves our star system. So there we find gamma dot of t. So that's all what happens. One part goes to alpha dot and the two parts at the end go to gamma dot. And now obviously we can write that with a single dot. Namely, it's the derivative of the two functions added. So in the end what we see is that alpha plus gamma solves our system star. Hence the conclusion is that the function alpha plus gamma also lies in our set S. And this shows the first inclusion we have for the two sets. So what remains to show is the second inclusion. For this we have to take an element of S and to show that it has the form alpha plus gamma. In fact this seems a little bit harder than just calculating as before. But let's see what we can do with our knowledge here. So let's take a solution beta from S and let's recall the picture from before. So there we have sketched our special solution gamma. And now we have two possibilities for our beta here. Either it completely coincides with gamma or it lies above or below in this picture. So maybe let's say we find our beta here. And then we can just look at the value of beta at t0. And there we need a new name. Maybe let's call it x0 tilde. In other words, this x0 tilde is the initial value for our beta. And indeed as before, we know there is a unique solution for the initial value problem. Hence, this is the first implication we get here. Beta is the unique solution of the initial value problem, where at t0 we have x0 tilde. And now what we want to do is to find an alpha such that alpha plus gamma is exactly beta. So with alpha we will jump from x0 at gamma to x0 tilde at beta. Therefore, the essential quest here is to find the correct alpha in S0. And as already mentioned, it should also be a solution of an initial value problem. However, for alpha we work in the homogeneous system, so we only have x dot is equal to a times x. And now the initial value at t0 should be given by x0 tilde minus x0. You see in the picture, this is exactly the jump we have to do. And this is already the whole idea and it will work. Simply because we already know that alpha plus gamma already solved the original ODE star. Indeed, we have shown before that alpha plus gamma lie in S. But now we also know the value of this function at t0. It's alpha of t0 plus gamma of t0, but we know that they solve initial value problems. So the first one is x0 tilde minus x0, and the second one is simply x0. And as we wanted by the construction, we get out x0 tilde. So in summary, what we have here is a solution of an initial value problem. Namely, the one where at t0 we have x0 tilde as the initial value. And there we see this is the same initial value problem as we had it for beta. And there we can use the uniqueness result of Pika Lindelof, 
this beta is exactly the same function as alpha plus gamma. And that's exactly what we wanted to show. Every beta in S has the form alpha plus gamma. So the two inclusions are shown and the equality of the sets is proven. And now in order to remember it, let's formulate the result again. The solution set of the system of linear differential equations is given as the set S0 plus gamma. Where S0 is the solution space of the homogeneous part, and gamma is just one chosen solution of the whole system. We say it's a particular solution because it does not matter which one we choose, but it's a fixed one for the whole description. And that's the whole result. The solution set of the system of linear ODEs is an affine subspace of dimension n. And as always, the number n gives the size of the system. So if we have a 2 times 2 matrix here, we have an affine subspace of dimension 2. And I would say let's look at some examples with the next videos. So I really hope we meet there again and have a nice day. Bye bye.